In this video, I want to share why you may not want to move to Texas. Yes, you heard me right. Why you may not want to move to Texas. If you're thinking about moving to Texas, this is gonna be a good video. Now I did share uh, reasons two years ago. I had another video very similar to this one from two years ago and I loved hearing all of the comments. So if you have any comments, put them below. Um, on any of these topics. Some of these topics you may agree with, some you may disagree with, some may be political and religious. And I felt it was important to update this video because many things have happened in just two years. So stay tuned. My name is Dana Pollard and I'm a real estate agent and I have a team here in Texas. We are located in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, but we also have referral partners down in Austin, Houston, San Antonio, the Hill Country, even El Paso. Guys, we have found and scouted out the best agents in those areas and if you're looking to move. So fill out the dream home questionnaire below if you're looking to move anywhere in Texas and I have a fantastic team here in Dallas-Fort Worth as well. So again, if you're thinking about moving to Texas, fill out the Dream Home Questionnaire in the link below. And if you're looking at selling a house anywhere in Texas, fill out the Sell My Home Questionnaire in the link below. Now, a lot has happened in the last two years. We're talking COVID, a new president, inflation, and many have made a beeline for the state of Texas. And so a real quick update to some of these videos that I've made over the last couple of years, um, talking about the low cost of living, well, things are going up. Well, they're really going up everywhere. So while we are still in Texas, a little lower than many of the states here for cost of living, especially with groceries, gas, and utilities and things like that, our house prices are going up. Now you still can find a home under 350, but you are going to have to go further out. I would say many of our cities, the average uh, median home price is between five and 600 now. Some of them are 400. It depends where you go, okay? <laughs> um, while some cities you have to pay a million plus just like other states to get into a home. However, we can help you narrow down where to live if you, regardless of your budget, $200,000, $2 million, $20 million, we have specialty agents that can help. I don't know why I threw all that just out there, but anyway, <laughs> in reference to the cost of living, things have gone up everywhere. We've had inflation, still inflation. Um, but so I would say that is a negative for Texas and that many people have been moving here, which is uh, increasing the cost of living. Now with COVID, this is, the mandate is that we do not have to wear masks here. We do not have to get vaccinated here. And so if that's very important to you, you may not want to move to Texas because the majority of Texans do believe in this thing we call freedom. And I know there's a big debate between freedom, um, personal responsibility and social responsibility. Uh, but just, I mean, I'm sure you know that Texas uh, leans on that freedom side. Now, another reason you may not want to move to Texas is the weather. Many people don't like Texas because it gets very hot in the summer. So now the average temperature is about 96 in the, the hottest months, but you can see that we go above 100 sometimes, 101, 102, 103. It is kind of rare and there's only a few days in the year that we do that. Uh, but it, it's hot pretty much from May through September in Texas. And so again, in the, the previous video, some people hate that. I actually love it, especially after the last couple of years that we've had some very cold winters. You may be surprised to hear that Texas can get cold in the winter time. And we have dipped below freezing, both it, February is usually our coldest month, January or February. But we tend to get, if it's going to ice, it ices here in February. So Last year we had the big snowmageddon where the whole state shut down and was dealing with snowmageddon where we had snow and freezing temperatures through the whole state, which is a very, very rare, unheard of. And we were dealing with issues of our electricity going in and out. We've never experienced that in Texas before. And uh, this year we did hit another freeze and we did have some ice come through, but we didn't experience the 
rolling blackouts with the electricity like we did last year. It is normal to experience a couple of days in February or January of ice and when that happens everything shuts down, the schools close, and it's called a snow day here in Texas. And Northerners make fun of us, but we don't have the tires, the traction, the equipment down here to take care of the ice because it's not the same thing as snow, right? It's one thing if it snows and you're driving on snow than it is if you're driving on sheets of ice where you just don't have any control. Now, we went to Galveston during this last freeze and my husband has a four wheel drive truck and it handled the ice pretty well. So I was very happy about that. So, but anyway, the weather, it can get very cold and it can get very hot. Uh, and again, the heat doesn't bother me as much as the cold because again, I go from AC to AC. Now, when we shoot some of these videos, I'm not gonna lie, it's been getting hot out there while we're shooting videos. Uh, but overall, I, when I'm outside in the summer, I generally like to be in a pool or a boat. <laughs> so that's how we deal with the heat here. Also talking about the weather, one of the things that some of our California clients or clients that don't experience all the seasons typically is our grass turns brown in the winter. And I had a, a family that was like, oh my gosh, it kind of shocked me, is my grass dying? Our grass goes dormant in the winter. Typically we have Bermuda grass. Sometimes we have St. Augustine grass here. Um, but if you want green grass in the winter, you have to put rye grass out for it to be green. Uh, but it does go dormant. And if you want your grass to stay green in the summertime, you do have to water it on a regular basis. Uh, but about November, it goes dormant. Uh, the other thing about weather is we do have tornadoes and hail. Those are the two uh, weather things that people are afraid of in Texas. And I do have a weather video if you want to check that out. It was done quite a while ago, but it's still valid. So on tornadoes, I like to share with people who are afraid of tornadoes, never experienced them, that that with tornadoes, we're not exactly sitting around afraid of tornadoes here in Texas. It's probably similar if you live in a place where there's um, a possibility of earthquakes, where we maybe a couple times a year, once, twice, three times a year, we may turn on the weather to see if there's any tornadoes in our area. We do have sirens for tornado warnings. And, but we're not exactly sitting around afraid of tornadoes. It's a very rare instance in Texas, Actually, the, the number one place in Texas for tornadoes is in near Houston, in Harris County, interesting enough. I thought it was up toward Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, there's also Tornado Valley, which is along the Red River bordering Texas and Oklahoma. Oklahoma actually has more Tex uh, Oklahoma actually has more tornadoes than Texas. But the number one spot for tornadoes is in Houston, near Houston. So really the things that uh, we, and again, we're not afraid of this. It's really the hail. Hail causes more damage, I would say, than tornadoes and that uh, when hail comes through, typically May, <laughs> it can cause damage to our roofs or if you're parked outside to the cars. And so the car is actually our number one concern, not our roof because we have insurance. Uh, one, of the, one of my personal clients who is now an agent on my team, that she's from California, she was like, oh, I thought, when she was doing an inspection on her home, she said, oh, I, I wasn't, I was so concerned about the roof, but here in Texas, we're not as concerned because typically we go through a new roof maybe once every 10 years and we do pay the deductible. So I'm not saying it's free, but we pay the deductible and our roof is replaced typically every 10 years, maybe 15 years. And so we're not ever having to replace a full roof out of our own pockets. So again, I'm not super terrified of hail or tornadoes. I'm not saying that they don't exist and that they're not important or that we don't respect them, but um, they're not as concerning to us when we live here in Texas. Now on that, I have some comments from the previous video I wanna share. Um, this one doesn't have a name, but it says, I've lived in five different cities in Texas and I love Texas. Here's some things you should know. It's hot in the summer. Yes, it is. People are conservative, mostly, and we're gonna talk about this in just a little bit. People are friendly. Yes, mostly. 
and we'll talk about this. People are neighborly and strangers will help you. Very true. If you're broke down on the side of the road, typically someone will come help you. In five, she is right. We love God. This is a plus because we will love you too. <laughs> and I'm going to mention religion here in Texas as well. Someone else had commented on the channel and said, I have lived in Texas all my life and I still can't stand the temperatures over 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And every year I always wish for cold winters with snow. So yeah, seems like I live in the wrong place. Uh, and Cindy Johnson says, so you're the one praying for the snow and cold. <laughs> I think that's a funny comment because of Snowmageddon last year and this year as well. That was just posted seven days ago. I think that's funny. I can say uh, a, another comment on the weather. When you live in Dallas, Fort Worth, it's, it can get humid, especially in May and June. But really, the further you go south, the more humid it gets. So. I do not like the humidity of Houston and San Antonio, honestly. I do love the beauty and the scenic uh, scenes of Northern San Antonio into the hill country, but it's very hot and humid in the summertime. The next topic we wanna to talk about is G-U-N-S. Yes, that word. And so many people don't wanna to move to Texas because they're afraid that we have people walking around carrying these things, you know what I mean? Texans love their guns, okay? They love them and most of them, not everyone. But if you've looked at recent news, I mean, it's like open carry is um, legal, but you don't exactly see people walking around with their guns, okay? It's very, I don't know if I've ever seen it. I have seen news stories, but I've personally never seen people walk around with open carry. Um, most people, that really like this is they get their concealed um, concealed license. I have one, I love it. Um, but that's kind of, it's not like people are walking around with guns, okay? <laughs> so if you don't like guns or those kind of laws, this might not be the place for you because people love to talk about it. They love to go to church, talk about Jesus and guns, <laughs> especially in the country areas. The next thing you may not like about Texas is the over politeness of some people, um, including my husband. Everywhere we go, he talks to everybody. It doesn't matter if we're standing in line, it doesn't matter if we're walking on the sidewalk, my husband will probably talk to you if he passes you out in public. Uh, so there are many people that are like this. It's a natural culture that if you are an outgoing person that you probably talk with people other strangers. If you're not an outgoing person, maybe an introvert, doesn't mean you have to talk to everybody. Uh, just don't be surprised if someone talks to you. So some people may not like this. This may not be the culture if you don't like random strangers talking to you. <laughs> Let's look at some of the comments. Kurt Healy um, says, I love the friendliness and hospitality of it there. It is very friendly here. He also likes the Flatland and Blue Bonnets. I did mention Flatland last uh, video two years ago. There are some beautiful scenic areas in the hill country. Uh, so we do have some great areas, but uh, there are a lot of Blue Bonnets here, which is the state flower and they are beautiful. So hi, Kurt. So along the friendliness, you can expect people to open the door for you. So if you go to the convenience store, it's common for gentlemen to open the door for ladies. And on occasion, you have a lady open the door for a man as well. Um, but that's, it's very courteous here. It's expected here. And as a woman, I love it. I think it's great. I think it's a way to um, communicate to women that they are valuable. Now, in other states, it may be, some people may think, well, I can do it myself. <laughs> I don't think it's anything against women. I think it's saying we're valuable. But those are just my opinions. So if you don't like that kind of culture, if, you, if you're more independent and you like it that way, then Texas may not be for you. Let's take a look at the comments. The first time I met my husband, he had just moved back to Oregon after spending two years in Texas. He was working at the local auto parts store and called me ma'am, and I was so offended. Yes, many people say ma'am and sir here. We are trained as kids to respect uh, adults. And so, but even in our adult years, we will say yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir, no sir, uh, just to one another. And it doesn't really matter how old someone is in our culture it's not about age but i know in other cultures that it's like age thing right <laughs> it's not here it's just conveying respect 
Uh, but she said she was so offended. So I asked to work with a different employee. This is funny. I do think it's a great tradition of respect, but in the North, it's so out of place that it comes across as insinuating the other person is older and creates a hierarchy and distance between adults. Uh, I, I, I'm so grateful she put this comment in here because that really clarifies kind of the difference in cultures, right? Um, here it doesn't, it doesn't uh, convey that at all. So they said they're now considering to moving to Texas because they don't like the rain. And she said she's worried that her being polite in Oregon standards is going to come across as rude in Texas, which I don't think so. I think that once you get here, if you're from another culture like that, you're going to start picking up on it very quickly and the culture remains the same. That's why I think for you fellow Texans that watch this video, I'm not afraid of our culture being changed too much because when people come from out of state, they appreciate the friendliness and you guys just typically just fall right in and you start doing the same things. And so I appreciate that. And I know our fellow Texans do too. So yeah, Pam says, having lived in Texas most of my life, I didn't even realize opening the door for someone is not something people globally don't expect or do, or that ma'am or surring a non-Texan might be weird for them. So I thought, <laughs> Yeah, when you grow up in Texas, you think it's normal, you should do that everywhere. Now I want to practice when I go out of state, say, yes ma'am, and see the response. But that may be a disrespectful thing to do. <laughs> the next thing I want to talk about is healthcare. I'd mentioned this in the other video two years ago. And while I have heard that healthcare is lower in Texas, um, there were some comments correcting me and I do want to address that. And so, um, we do have great healthcare here. What I personally don't like about it is that having to use the PPO for a referral specialist for this or referral for this. Um, but our healthcare, especially in the cities. Now, Texas is very large, so we do rank low on the healthcare, but I think it's there's so many rural areas that it can be lower in those areas. But when you go to the cities, like Houston's like very, very top when it comes to healthcare. We have great hospitals. Uh, Plano, Dallas, Fort Worth. I mean, just Austin there. We have really good health care. Uh, I just personally didn't like the process of getting the referral for a doctor, for a specialty doctor. So that was like, that's my personal little, I don't like this about Texas. And you probably have PPOs in other states as well. That's just, I have just heard from other people that, uh, from other states that it can be a little easier to see your specialty doctors. The next thing that reason, and this is probably one of the number re one reasons why many people do not want to move to Texas is our high property tax. If you haven't heard, which many of you have, we have very high property taxes here, especially in the newer subdivisions that have PIDs and MUDs, a PID or MUD. A PID is a public improvement district. A MUD is a municipal utility district. What these are is their additional taxes on top of your normal taxes, like city and school and county, to help the development. And so you're going to get extra perks and benefits when there's a pit or MUD typically. It's going to be a beautiful development, but you are paying for it. So these tax rates, on average, I would say calculate 2.8% of your purchase price. Um, it is based off the tax appraised value. Now, many times those are lower than what your actual appraised value if you were to sell your home would be. Like for instance, mine is lower, mine's about $50,000 lower, and each year it has a cap of, of being raised 10%. But mine is still lower, even though I have a newer home. So, but still calculate it as if you were paying off your purchase price and you can protest every year that your taxes come out and you can get a homestead exemption, which can be anywhere from 5,000 off your property value up to 20%, um, depending on the city. So do check your cities or local resource for that, which are the counties, and to see if there's a homestead exemption, which is a big deal. You can also, if you're over 65, freeze your taxes and get exemption there. 
And if you're a veteran, depending on the percentage, if you have a disability, depending on your percentage, you can get a discount on your property taxes up to 100%. So that's kind of a big deal if you are a veteran. By the way, thank you so much if you are for serving our country. I love that Texas values their veterans. I really do. Now, the thing we don't have here are state income tax. And so that's why we have such high property taxes for some people having no state income tax is well worth paying the property tax. So you have to do your own calculations on this based on your income and what you're paying. Many people, it's a wash. And so don't let property taxes scare you from moving to Texas, just do some good calculations first. Because you may be surprised that you're actually paying less in taxes than uh, another state with income tax. The next reason many people may not like Texas is because traditionally and still today, it still leans conservative. Uh, we are still a red state as of the last elections. And especially if you, as you go into the country areas, you are going to find very high conservatives and it's very, they are very vocal with their political views and conservative values, very, very vocal. If you lean on the liberal side, that's where Austin gets the reputation for being very liberal. And Dallas, as well as Houston, the big cities are liberal as well as the southern border, okay? Now, if you're looking for a more city life, Fort Worth leans more conservative than Dallas and probably more so than most of the major cities. And your suburbs tend to be, with the exception of Austin, your suburbs tend to be to lean conservative as well as the country life. So just if that's important to you, definitely check to see what areas are more conservative or liberal depending on your values. The next thing we wanna talk about is in Texas, we do live in what we call the Bible Belt. And so you will find many people who are religious here, uh, many, many Christians, and uh, but other religions as well. And so, but what I like about Texas is the majority of people don't look down on you for believing that there is a God and that God exists, okay? And I love that, that we don't have to hide and pretend that we don't believe in God. And I'm not saying that everyone here believes in God, but many, many people do. So you don't have to feel ostracized if you have a faith that God exists, okay? It's culturally acceptable to love the Lord here. And there are so many churches, no matter, people go, Dana, where's a good church? They're everywhere. <laughs> You're gonna find churches, churches everywhere. So I'm like, you, we have mega churches, we have small churches and home churches and all kinds of different churches. There are, um, there's a Buddha temple, there's Hindu temples, there's, uh, the, every religion is here. We attract people from all over the world. I just love that there's a common acceptance, right? Acceptance. The next thing I wanna talk about that I did not mention in the previous video are the critters. Now I do have a video on critters, but one of the things I forgot to mention are mosquitoes. <laughs> one reason, one thing I do not like about Texas is our mosquitoes. Ah, yes. And the further south you go, the more mosquitoes. Or if you're near a body of water, the, the trick is, is you don't want to be near a body of water that has no movement. So if you're going to live by a pond that's in a neighborhood, it's good to have a fountain that's in the pond, right? Um, if you're gonna live by a lake, one that's kind of moving, okay? So that's the biggest deal. You don't want standing water because that's where mosquitoes like to breed. Now, I do find at my house, I don't live near a pond, um, but we still get mosquitoes and I don't like them. Some people attract them more than others, but <laughs> what was very interesting to me this last year is we had a youth event at our house in our backyard. We blew up a big screen TV and watched some, uh, a movie with the teenagers and we had someone come and they volunteered to spray our backyard for mosquitoes and he came a week before our, our event and I was shocked at how well it worked. And so they say that you can spray for mosquitoes. Uh, uh, someone on my team, she sprays once a year every summer. Some people spray once a month, but I was really amazed at how well the spray worked. I don't know, go Google how it works. I don't know how it works, but somehow when they sprayed a week later, mm, I think I will do that every year now, spray for mosquitoes in my backyard. We do have bugs, 
we do have, uh, for us, I just get the pest control out here. I have a pest control video too. <laughs> and so I don't see very many bugs in my house. Um, we, they spray for spiders, uh, especially when you're new construction. If you buy a new home, you are gonna see a lot of bugs. Get your pest control out there immediately, but you will see that they will subside the longer you live in the home and, the, and as you continue to spray. So now we've been in our home about two years and it's very rare for us to see a bug. I'm not concerned about roaches in my house, but roaches are common in Texas if you don't take care of your place. Uh, but we have never experienced roaches in our house, so I'm not afraid of those. If I ever see one, I'm like, ah! That's one thing I, I do have the fear of having roaches because I've worked in apartments before. And if a neighbor does not take care of their stuff and they have roaches and don't they don't take care of them, it, that that's where you wanna watch out for roaches, okay? Uh, but typically in a house, you're pretty much in control because <laughs> we have pest control. The other thing are ants. And again, we have pest control for that. There are bees, like wasps. I do not like wasps, uh, but our pest control will come through out in the months and they'll knock down all the nests and then they'll rebuild and they'll knock them down again. But at least I don't have to be the one to do that. And the thing that many people say they're afraid of are snakes. There are snakes in Texas. It's very rare for me to see one in the suburbs, okay? If you live in the country, you know to wear boots and jeans. And, um, and so when it comes to snakes, if you are terrified of snakes, just don't live in the country. Live in a suburb or city life. And it's, again, in the suburbs, I'll see one on a rare, rare occasion. We're talking like once every few years, guys. It's very rare. Uh, and if you are afraid of them, you want to stay away from lar tall grass because they like to go to tall grass and that's kind of what you want to be aware of. But I'm not exactly wondering when am I going to step on a snake because I, I just don't see them. I think the last thing that I want to mention that I personally don't like about Texas is the traffic. It is starting to get congested here, I'm not going to lie. And it's really where all the construction is being done. And so depending on where in the metropolitan areas you are, there could be some construction. Highway 35 is known to just always have construction. They are on the Fort Worth side, they are building in the North Fort Worth area, which I feel is a really nice area. Um, but it's gonna be a while before they finish construction and traffic is really bad right now because of construction. And there are pockets where traffic gets backed up. If you do not drive on express lanes, they are building express lanes. If And if you don't drive on the express lane, which is a toll, which costs money, then it's the traffic is pretty bad now. I don't drive to work every day. I work out of my home quite a bit. And so when I do go to work or whenever I do go look at houses, then I go to the, I use the express lane. It's not as big a deal. Uh, but if you're not using it, it can get pretty bad. And so that's one thing Texans don't like <laughs> about everyone moving here is that traffic is getting congested. But I still would say if you're comparing it to like, I don't, I don't know what you're going to compare it to. Many people say it's still not as bad as other states. So like California, New York, places like that. But when you come visit, check it out and, and let me know what you think about the traffic here in Texas. Thanks again so much for watching this video. Uh, fill out the dream home questionnaire in the link below if you're looking to buy a home in Texas. And fill out the sell my home questionnaire in the link below if you're thinking about selling your home and getting a value for it. I'm happy to take a look. Thanks so much.